Hello everyone, it's Larry. This is a video of how I made this LEGO motorized train carriage for 4 stud wide narrow gauge track. Over the years I've made videos of my many small scale LEGO trains and 4 wide LEGO track. So I suppose it's natural that many people wanted to see them motorized moving on their own. Which I've avoided for a long time. I've been happy just using string and editing to make my models look like they're moving. However, I'd probably have motorized them myself ages ago, if it were straightforward, like with regular 6-wide track. But motorizing LEGO trains at this scale presents problems. LEGO's official motorized parts are big. Very big, in fact, compared to the trains I'd be putting them into. The battery box alone pretty much takes up the entire size of a train. The dedicated 6-wide train motor is useless here, obviously, but LEGO do make a fairly small motor. One that I'm sure has you thinking, oh that could easily fit inside one of your trains. And yeah? Kinda? It's 3 studs wide, so I'd have to do some insane techniques to fit it into a build that's 4 studs wide. And even then, I somehow need to fit in a mechanism to turn the wheel axle. But if I want to control it remotely, I somehow need to fit in this massive IR receiver, squeeze in lots of thick cables, and the giant battery box. You can see how this gets out of hand. However, it's not impossible to do this. This 2020 video by British Bricks shows LEGO Power Functions parts fit into a custom-built motor carriage, tailed by a battery box carriage, pushing along a locomotive. All the parts just about squeeze in. This is cool, of course, don't get me wrong, but I didn't want to build a dedicated consist just for pushing a locomotive. Ideally, I'd be able to have it all contained in one small-scale thing which, with LEGO's own bulky pieces, was just impossible. However, I was told about a third-party LEGO-compatible motor system called Circuit Cubes. Circuit Cubes produce battery and motor pieces significantly smaller than LEGO's official ones, though even then it didn't seem all that possible to me. The battery box was still 4 studs wide, i.e. the width of the trains themselves, so I would have to make it wider than normal just to fit it in. But regardless, I gave it a try anyway, and in early 2023, I put together this. I used a gear and a worm screw, with a circuit cube's motor to rotate a wheel axle, somehow held up by floating Technic pieces. This wouldn't have actually worked, and not just because of that, but because of something else I didn't realise at the time. The small LEGO train wheels I use for most of my builds don't work with axles, you just can't put them on. These ones don't even fit onto bars, or really anything that could be rotated by a gear. Which means these wheels just can't be motorized, so I pretty much gave up. It just seemed like there'd be no way to make it motorized but in scale with my other builds. Until I came across this video by Coaster Blocks. Sure, it's bigger than my builds, but on four wide track. And this was what flipped the switch in my mind that made me realize it's possible. It can be done! Sure, having to use larger wheels is not ideal, but it's not as much of a deal breaker as I'd thought. And after being reminded yet again of circuit cubes, I took the plunge and actually bought them. Now this video is not sponsored by circuit cubes. In fact, I'll take the liberty to say that it was blimmin' expensive and shipping and packaging cost a lot. Wow, okay, a huge box ultimately just for this. But the product is really good. The battery charges with USB, and being able to control via Bluetooth on my phone without an IR receiver or remote is just incredible. Probably the best way I could do this is by having this fixed onto the plate, whereas this cube will just sit inside a bunch of walls on either side and be loose. I'm now going to try to come up with some ideas on how to go about doing this in a very, very, very small powered carriage. And so, I pulled out some pieces and experimented with putting together a rough frame for how I could get everything held together. I used jumper plates to align the motor, for it to line up with the wheel which was held on by a plate at the front. Oh yeah! And as rough as it was, it worked! It seemed to hold together surprisingly well. Well... Oops. After rebuilding it, I built a more advanced track layout to test it more thoroughly. It was very cool seeing it move down the tracks all on its own. 
It was a very simple build, so it had no problems with going over curves or switch points. or buffers. I think things were so successful here because the wheels were so close together and because I wasn't testing it moving at varying speeds, rather at one continuous speed. Things did get less successful though when I tried to give it a load, pushing or pulling something, which it wasn't really able to do, unless the load was very light. Huh. I'm sorry, I think this might be the worst shot I've ever filmed. Further testing proved it just couldn't take the weight of, well, much of anything. Just barely being able to tug along two of my lightest empty trucks at a snail's pace. But it was just about okay with one. Pushing lended the same result. I figured this must have been due to only one set of wheels actually being powered, resulting in not enough torque to carry any weight. And so, I took note of this first design and went into Bricklink Studio to design an improvement. And not only that, but one that could look like fairly in-scale rolling stock too. This was my first attempt. Despite how different it may look, it's very closely based on the model you just saw. Now the circuit cube's motor is not a Lego piece, so I built this custom representation of it. As for the mechanism, this was my first attempt at a solution for both sets of wheels to be driven. It is a bit of an odd way of doing it, with how strangely built it all is. Despite how it may look, these sections on the ends are actually not at all connected to the central core or to each other. They are only held together by the roof. So this is not at all structurally sound. It's because of just how large the components inside are, and just how much I had to squeeze into this tiny space. This large gap here is meant to be space for the battery cube to slot into. As for the mechanism, I hadn't actually done any tests to see if it works, as I didn't have all the pieces. I had only done small building tests to make sure this would all fit into place. The idea was that the motor spins this gear, which spins this gear, which spins this long axle, which spins this gear, and all the wheels would spin together in one direction. Now, the more capable engineers among you probably already know that this wouldn't work in practice. But we live and we learn. Now, you might be able to tell that with this build, the aesthetics and appearance of the model came secondary to everything going on inside. I had to build bigger than the usual constraints to fit it all in, and the ends needed to be held on by an external panel. So when I found out that 4x4 tiles apparently existed, and in grey, it was a godsend, and I heavily used them in the build. Keeping it in scale with my other builds was not completely possible, because of just how much had to be squeezed into this, and the wheels, which were considerably bigger than normal. So within these constraints, I just tried to make it look as in scale as possible, and cohesive with my other rolling stock. I made the roof pretty much identical to that of my Annie and Clarabel models, and my troublesome truck's goods van, not brake van. I made the buffer beams black to blend in and not stick out among the others, and I tried to match the buffer beam heights of my other rolling stock, despite the wheels being taller. I placed panelling over the top of the wheels, like one of those old cars, to help it feel the same scale and detract attention away from the wheel size. While the model was forced into being function over form, I did keep aesthetics in mind. I loosely based it on a utility van from Thomas & Friends, as there were some with two wheel sets rather than four. I could have chosen a more interesting colour, but the large tiles in grey were cheaper, and also I wanted this van to blend in and be inconspicuous rather than stand out. The tiles did unfortunately mean I couldn't really put any details on though. Underneath the tiles, I'd slightly adjusted the build, adding bricks with studs to hold on the side panels. It was also made symmetrical on both sides. I knew this build was far from perfect. I mean, some of these tiles were barely held on. But when it comes to physics, sometimes building digitally can be like working in the dark. This was the kind of build where I would figure out so much more from building it physically. So I ordered the pieces for this, and I attempted building it live. Do subscribe if you don't want to miss my live streams. Before the motor was even connected, my chat made me aware of the fact that my gear system wasn't going to work. Right, yeah no, I was worried about that as well. And how to fix it, which I was very grateful for. 
Oh, I see. Okay. All I need to do is pull off one of these. After being told that I needed only one gear on each wheel axle, I corrected this mistake. Yeah! Here I realised that when designing the model, I didn't account for this plastic part of the wire where it connects to the motor. It's this connector that's the problem. These components on their own fit in fine, but this wire thing is just so long that it makes connecting it anywhere almost impossible. After a lot of thinking on the fly, I tried building around the connector. Oh my goodness, it just about works. <laughs> this is like a surgical operation getting this working. Look at that everyone, don't get too used to it, it might not work. This thing might actually just move right now if I do this. Whoa, this is an uneven surface so it's struggling. Spoiler alert, that wasn't the reason. Well isn't this exciting everyone? Why is it struggling so much? Okay, well then. It's quite literally fallen apart. The gear needs to be... Have I, have I put it on wrong? Oh, is one wheel spinning the wrong way round? Is that why? Yes, that's hilarious. One wheel is going one way, the other is going the other way. Let's just run it one more time for the funny. Yeah, it's, it's, lit, it's fighting itself. It's trying to go two ways. It's a powerful metaphor, that is. It seems to be going the same way now. Here we go. That's more like it. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. It finally worked. And also, having all wheels driven really fixed how much it could push and pull. Now able to push Toby with ease. I'm so happy, man. This works. This flipping works. <laughs> yes. Yeah, wow. It totally just pulls Thomas and Young Clarabelle. I tested it on curves, which worked and on points, which it liked to get stuck on. And then this happened. It finds it much easier to fall apart than... <laughs> yeah, so this version was very fragile. The fact that the front and back weren't really held on well was proving to be a flaw. Okay. So I went back into studio to solve this. I redesigned a lot of the way it was built inside to make it significantly more structurally sound. One side is now held on by many studs, and the panels now connect to the front and rear, holding them together and making it much harder for them to fall apart. The other side is now held together in one piece. It can attach on and come off easily, which is very useful for accessing the battery. I made aesthetic changes too, deciding to have the black bottom go out longer, looking more like a running board and the bottom middle is now symmetrical. I also made the necessary fixes to the gear mechanism, so that I could make instructions for this for any of you guys who'd like to build your own one of these. Before ordering the pieces, I needed to make sure it was final, so I built it out of what I had lying around, and did one last testing livestream to make sure it all worked. And it's actually pulling them, just like a locomotive. Make a very long chain and pull something with the van. Interesting idea, let's try it. It's working! <laughs> it's very strange, but it's working! <laughs> Testing here made it apparent that if it's pushing something with a mismatched buffer beam height on a curve, it sometimes derails. Uh, well there you go everyone, our first train crash of the day. After more testing and thinking regarding this, the only solution I was able to come up with was an alternate buffer beam at a lower height, for pushing things that required it. It's not the cleanest or prettiest solution, but it'll have to do. A lot of pieces on the inside will never be seen, and can be any colour, so I denoted them as blue for the instructions. Unfortunately though, you really can see through the cracks, so these corner pieces have to be black or grey. After ordering more pieces for the final time, I replaced the miscoloured bricks. And then, it was done! I was so much happier with the much more secure build, allowing the side panel to come off so cleanly, and allowing the battery to just slot in. I even changed the pieces on the side so that you could tuck the wire in. After connecting it through the Circuit Cubes app, and tucking everything away, it was good to go on the tracks, which by the way are from Trix Bricks. 
Here it is running on the track. No string was used in the following footage. Here it is pushing my custom Lego trains. Finally, even my small-scale cherry steamer can be motorised. And of course, we can't forget Thomas and his friends. Here, the buffer mounting problem started happening again. So I mounted the buffers lower on the carriage. Once the height matched, there were no problems with it going round the curve. And by the way, I use Lego chain pieces to couple the trucks together. Now, as happy as I am with this, it's definitely not perfect. It has no issue with going straight, but points can be a problem. <laughs> if you want to build this for yourself, the instructions are available on my Rebrickable page. You're welcome to make your own changes or improvements to it, and do let me know if you do. Okay, I'm going to get comments about this, so... No, I don't think I can make a motorised locomotive at this scale. Everything barely fits into this oversized box as is. There's no way I could fit all this into one of my small-scale locomotive builds. They're just too piece-dense. But if you want to try making one and prove me wrong, then be my guest. Also, so many people asked me when live, No, I am not giving it a face, because as I've stated, I don't want it to stand out. Plenty of Thomas and Friends rolling stock can be seen without faces, and I want it to be suitable for non-Thomas trains too. If you want to add one to yours though, I recommend doing it like this. Or like this. Well I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe for more, and maybe check out my other stuff. This was a very long one, I appreciate you sticking around till the end. Thanks for watching.